Welcome to Study with the Best, the magazine show that's all about CUNY. I'm Tina Beth Pina. Today's show highlights the visual arts. From the subway platforms in New York City to the desert to rural Mexico, from the Brazilian favelas in Queens to a pop-up art shop in Manhattan. Susan Kreil is a renowned artist whose work hangs in the world's most prestigious museums. We went to her Manhattan studio to hear more about her latest work, which she describes as moving between the poles of beauty and horror. My work has been a kind of interweaving over the years where I pick up a theme, it may disappear for a while, and then it picks up again in another incarnation from another angulation. In 1991, when the Gulf War happened, I had a real break and a shift in my work. Uh, and that's when the work turned sort of overtly political. And from that point on until now, I've worked in a bifurcated way. I'm always working on something that has more to do with the beauty side, whether it's the fading, disappearing colors of the walls of Rome, or whether it's the sort of ancient worn tiles and patterns of some of the great cathedrals in Italy. That sort of gives me a sense of beauty and that other side while I'm working on 9-11, the burning oil fields, Guantanamo, Abu Ghraib. There was something so unacceptable that we would torture people. You know, given all of our rhetoric about human rights and uh, so forth. The internet really played into this so much. And I felt that you couldn't, I couldn't disassociate myself from those photographs. This man was in Egypt, he was taken off an airplane. It was a mistaken identity. He was standing on his tiptoes in that. He would have drowned if he had let go. And that was testimony that, that I had read. I, he finally did get released. The doctors, psychologists, were involved in, complicitly involved, in creating the circumstances of what happened in these black boxes. They figured out what were the phobias that these men had. These are actually the size of the black box, and that's exactly how they fit into it. I've tried to show the distress and the discomfort of what it must be like to be in, in a container like that for hours and hours and possibly days on end. The metaphor for me was when I found the, basically the white line uh, the chalk line with all of its associations at a crime scene that's drawn on the pavement or whatever or, or when there's an accident of where the body was. I also thought about Pompeii where what was left after those terrible fires were these voids of where the human beings had been. And what they then did was they poured plaster into these voids to, to recreate the figures. That sense of the void uh, and of that fragility of what that line is. The skin is a protection. It's a major protection, obviously, for the body. And when someone is tortured, what happens, I believe, is that that protective layer is gone. It becomes porous. It becomes no longer there. I do think that beauty has been an entry point in, into some of this more horrific work, because if you, all you see is the horror, you just automatically turn off. I think that if you can enter it and then begin to feel and experience the horror, I think it's a stronger experience. I need that balance. The eventual thing that I want to do is to finish the third part, as I see it, of the trilogy 
the first being Abu Ghraib, the second being Guantanamo, and the third I would like to investigate the American prison system because I think they're all interconnected. They're all interconnected with torture, abuse, with rationalization of things that are simply unacceptable like uh, how can you say that 10, 20, 30 years of solitary confinement is not torture? I would hope that one is able to connect in with one's own experience about what it is to be in pain, what it is to inflict pain, uh, and to maybe think about it uh, and feel it in some way. Thanks for watching Study with the Best. For all things CUNY, log on to our website at cuny.tv or you can Facebook and tweet us. See you next time. Bye. I spent, I'd say, almost 10 days in the, in the burning oil fields. I took about 1,000 photographs. I hadn't been able to, to read what I was looking at. It, it didn't make sense. And when I got there, I understood, because it was like Mad Max is meeting you know, Alice in Wonderland. I mean, everything, the scale, the dimension of it,